Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a new 12 volt 100 amp hour battery from Watt Cycle. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, when you first open it, you should expect to see a user's manual with a uh, small card inside. And it looks like it just has some basic information on there. And then a good sized piece of styrofoam. And then we have the battery and two sets of post bolts with post bolt covers. All right, and after reading the manual a bit, uh, I've come to learn that the uh, 100 amp hour minis and the 100 amp hour group 31 case variety have the, probably the, the exact same BMS because they have all the same specs. You want to charge it up to 14.6 volts. Um, it can discharge all the way down to 9.2 volts before the BMS shuts the battery down. Um, it does have low temperature charging protection, which we will be testing in a little bit. And it does have high amperage protection, but it says that it won't trigger until 300 amps, give or take 50 amps. So between 250 and 350 amps is when this battery will shut off. And it says that the BMS is actually rated for 100 amps of continuous charging and discharging. Uh, but when you do charge these batteries, it's recommended that you charge them at a 0.2C rate, which is right around 20 amps. The one thing I still don't really understand is what happens between the 100 amp continuous discharge and the 300 amp uh, max. I feel like there should be something in the middle there that will shut this battery down, um, you know, after 30 seconds, you know, like a, like a 200 amp continuous for 10 seconds because the wiring inside is not rated for that much amperage for that long of a period. Let's go ahead and do the things we should do when we first open up the box and pull our battery out. And those are checking the voltage on the terminals to make sure that the battery is operational and is shipped to us in a, in a good state. And then uh, we're going to charge it all the way up to 14.6 volts using a lithium iron phosphate charger. And then we will do a discharge test to make sure that the battery has the capacity that we paid for. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and check the voltage of the battery. When it's shipped to you, it should be between 13.1 and 13.2 volts. So let's check it now. And we have 13.18, so that is perfect. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and charge this all the way up to 100%, and then I will perform a discharge test and I will show you the results when we get back. All right, here are the results to the Watt Cycle Group 31 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. And you can see that this uh, charge curve, or the discharge curve, looks pretty good. Uh, at the very beginning, it drops down to what, 12.836 volts. Um, you know, in the first, here's the first 5% right now, we're still at 12.832 volts. And if you look all the way down to 90%, we are still at 12.24 volts. At 95%, you can see that's where it really starts to drop, is you know, uh, right at uh, about 94 amp hours into the test, the, uh, the voltage starts to drop from 12.1, quickly dropping below 12 at 95. And then from there, the voltage just drops like a rock, just like lithium iron phosphate always does. But all in all, this looks really good. Uh, when it comes to the capacity, you can see it down here that the capacity is 102.3 amp hours. So above the rated capacity that they said. So let's go ahead and do the high amperage testing. All right, well, the high amperage test is all set up. So let's see what we got going on. All right, here is our uh, Watt Cycle Group 31 Pro lithium iron phosphate battery. It is uh, connected to a 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter for MX Moonfree. We do have an amp clamp, which is now reading about 0.85 amps. And we have a voltmeter, which is 13.38 volts coming out of the battery right now. We have our timer. 
We have a 1000 uh, watt uh, heat gun. We have an 1100 watt griddler. And we have a, I think a 1000 watt Elite Gourmet uh, hot plate. So we're gonna be turning all these on to give us our 100 amps, 200 amps, and then our 300 plus amps of discharge from this battery to give it that full test. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Start our timer and we're gonna let it run for five minutes. And you can see that we are running actually around 90 amps right now. So I'm just gonna keep it at that. Our voltage has dropped down to 12.81. And I'll come back in five minutes just to make sure everything's fine. Okay, well, it's been uh, about five minutes and we'll see that I did adjust my amp clamp because it was reading 90 amps and I've always seen it, you know, around 100 to 105. So I adjusted it and it did jump up to 106 amps. So that is what is correct. The voltage is 12.65 still. And this battery has handled this 100 amps without any issue whatsoever. So let's go ahead and introduce some more amperage by turning on another 1,000 watts. All right. The voltage has dropped down to 12.2. The amperage is now 208 amps coming out of this battery. And let's go ahead and see how long we can run this for. And now I say that, but I'm only gonna let it run for like a minute, a minute and a half. And it started at around five minutes and 40 seconds. I'll come back when it says seven minutes. All right, we are now at seven minutes. It's been over a minute and 20 seconds and this thing is still pumping 211 amps. Again, nothing really feels warm. The connections are starting to get a little warm, but no big deal. So let's go ahead and turn on this 1100 watt griddler. Oh, you can hear the sound on the fan on my heat gun really lowering down. The, uh, the battery is now at 11.49 volts. We are 325 amps in now. This should only run, uh, you know, for 30 seconds at the most. So at eight minutes, uh, I'll be kind of worried, but it does say in the documentation that it can pull 300 amps, give or take 50 amps. So it's only at 322, but really this thing should be shutting off, uh, you know, at eight minutes. So I'll give it until 8.30, and then I'm gonna turn on this uh, new wave induction cooktop at 600 watts, which will give it up to 370 amps, I think. But yeah, this battery is still, still pulling over 320, almost 320 amps right now. Voltage is 11.34. Let's go ahead and turn on this new wave and this battery should shut off. Watts, 600 medium high start voltage is 11 amperage is 372 time is 8 minutes and 45 seconds this thing should be shutting down this is getting kind of worrisome here 370 amps let's just pump it all the way up to and there it goes okay so nine minutes uh, voltage is now down to 2.5, so that means that the battery has shut off. The case is a bit hot. Terminal is not too bad, not too bad. So let me just turn this inverter off, and I would say this test is complete. All right, now it's time to test the low temperature charge and protection of this watt cycle 12 volt battery. Now, um, I've gotten in contact with the company because I had issues before where it wouldn't shut off right around 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And uh, they contacted me and said that they actually have their BMSs programmed to be five degrees Fahrenheit lower than 32 degrees. Uh, because they feel that there are false triggers sometimes if the temperature doesn't drop down far enough uh, leading to the battery not being able to charge when it really should. So I went ahead and set my ice co refrigerator to 24 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to put this battery in there. I'm going to leave it in there for about 25 hours. 
and then that way I know for a fact that this battery is sitting right at around 24 degrees Fahrenheit and then we're going to test it to see if it will charge. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, well, it's been about 26 hours since I put this in there. So let's go ahead and take it out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try to charge it with this Litime 20 amp charger. You can see right now that the, the light is blinking green and that means that this is on standby. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it and it will turn a solid red, but only for like one or two seconds. After that, it will turn a solid green, and that means the battery has told the charger to turn off. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, here we go. Solid red. And it goes back to a green, so perfect. This battery does have low temperature charging protection. All right, so what do I think of the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate group 31 size battery from Watt Cycle? Well, its capacity is good. I think it, it tested at 102 amp hours, which is uh, uh, what 2% over the rated capacity. Um, when it comes to the over amperage protection, um, I, I wish it had a little bit of protection in between, uh, you know, anything under 300 plus amps. Um, I feel like there should be uh, max continuous for 100. Uh, you know, after a 30 seconds to a minute of 200, something it should shut off. And then five seconds at 300, it should shut off. Um, I know it can be done, so I just wish they could, they could program that into the BMS. Uh, it does have cold temperature charging protection. Um, I still don't understand why they can't set it a little bit higher. I've been told by the company that they do set it five degrees lower just to uh, make sure that the battery um, doesn't trigger at temperatures higher than 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So I understand that, but um, I guess I just wish it was a little bit more accurate. With all that being said though, this is a solid battery. I would definitely recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this watt cycle battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll have this battery and everything else I used in my description. Thanks again and have a good day. Bye bye.